The EB2 is a green card for exceptional ability, so it's more similar to the P visa standards than it is to the O visa standards that the EB1 requires. It's an interesting visa because it lists a number of different things that you can have exceptional ability in, and that includes entertainment, but it doesn't include athletics. There was a case that was one that says that athletics can be entertaining. We think that only applies to the sports that are televised, though. So in those sorts of instances, it's really interesting. There's a number of criteria, none of which are similar to what an athlete would do. So you have to use the comparable evidence category and drop all those things in. So you can look at P visa level categories. So you don't need to have national or international awards. They could be player of the week awards. They could be player of the month awards. They could be lesser significant things. Maybe media that wasn't in major media or major trade magazines, but in lesser or in local papers. Things that would cover some of the things that showed that this athlete had excelled beyond the scope into what would be an exceptional ability and not just a regular player at that level. Agent-based petitions are also things that can be used in the O's and P's. Um, these are really interesting because they allow unlike other non-immigrant or temporary visas, the ability to have multiple, what they call direct employers. The agent can sit there for immigration purposes only. They don't have to be an agent, such as someone that would go out and obtain contracts for somebody, but that agent has to have a contractual agreement where the agent is permitted by the direct employer to represent them for the purpose of this visa, and the agent has some liability for example, if the person needs to go home or is fired, then the agent along with the direct employers would be responsible for sending them home. The agent-based petitions can have multiple employers like we talked about by themselves to have endorsements without some degree of risk. So we've used this, I believe we had one of the first NBA related agent-based petitions. We have performed that for numerous basketball players, rugby players, and many other sports, especially the individual sport, where they have a lot of different types of competitions and they have numerous different types of supporters or sponsors. The national interest exemption is something that's going on during the pandemic. It may not be relevant that much longer, but there's a number of countries that are denying entry in the United States, and so you need to obtain a national interest exemption. In March 2021, that exemption started excluding athletes. So there are only 12 sports out of, we represent over 50, uh, and there are hundreds of them, that have a national interest exemption agreement with the federal government, and it's the OFO office. And those OFO offices have one person that's in charge of obtaining those permissions. And there's two things to get. One, if you have a visa already, then you need to go to that office to get the national interest exemption to leave the country and enter the United States. If you don't have a visa and you set up for an appointment, you need to get that appointment expedited. The latter is much more difficult. Both of them are very difficult. If you need more help on that, please contact us or another attorney that handles the NIE issues. To start your visa process, initiate a chat with our ambassadors at onlinevisas.com who are standing by to help you.